Good to be here tonight. We appreciate everybody coming and uh, being in the service. We're going to shut those bathrooms off. I don't know for some reason the, the pump out here that we just got done putting in ain't working, so it's just surely been a thorn in, our, in, in my flesh. But, but I, I think I'm going to praise the Lord anyway tonight. Amen. We're going to bless the name of the Lord. If you need to use the bathroom, just if you're ashamed to get up and walk through here, you can just walk around and, uh, and use this back part back here so we'll get it figured out, Lord willing. Uh, after church tonight or in the morning. Huh? Well, there's a uh, maple tree back there at the back. <laughs> if y'all need to use the, <laughs> use the bathroom out there, uh, if you need to use it, just go on up and use the fellowship hall. Just use the fellowship hall if you need to, if you need to use it. So, all right, amen. We, th we thought we had it fixed. We bought a, something, I guess. I don't know what it is. I was telling Jack and Randall back there, as soon as we put that pump in, we was feeling good about it and just hoping that it was going to take care of everything. And then the plumber, uh, we talked to the plumber the next day, and he said we forgot to put a hole in that to prime the pump. So Scarlett was out there with me, had to get back down in there and, and get that hole in that thing. It's just I have lived in that thing for a good while now. I just want to tell you what, y'all got a good pasture. I hope you're next. And I hope you're next, Pastor. Amen. We'll get down in them holes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, let's all stand about the Lord in the service. Amen. Lord Jesus, we love you tonight. God, we're so thankful, Lord, to be here. We're thankful, God, to be on the King's Highway and have joy, peace down in our soul, Lord. There's nothing like serving you, Jesus. We ask you tonight, God, to uh, look down in your great love and your mercy, God, and just may the sweet Holy Ghost, Lord, just abide, and may you come down tonight, Lord, and just get us, Lord, in a sane mind and, Lord, the same spirit, God, to lift up your name. And we just ask you humbly, Lord, just to, uh, God, just to take us higher, uh, Lord, than we've ever been. We love you now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. All the choir. Come on, let's sing tonight. Praise the Lord. Everybody can. Well, let's come and sing uh, for the Lord. Come on and sing for the Lord.
Praise the Lord. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord tonight. Anybody have a prayer request? I'll bring a heart before y'all come out and pray. I'll come out and pray. Come to lead us. Father, again, in the name of God, Son, the divine hands of the Holy God, we thank you, Lord, for just another day that you have given us. We pray the ministry of the opportunity, Lord, in behalf of our families and people tonight, Lord. And God, the many, many souls of this old world, the many things, God, that goes on in this world. We know today, God, that without you, Jesus, Lord, that we're nothing, God, without the sweet spirit of God's grace. I pray, God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, God, that you move, that God, the power of the spirit of God would be manifested, God, in great and mighty ways. Lord, we know today, God, that you have the ability, God, to do great things. And Lord, the zeal of thine house, Lord, for the beating of prayer, God. And we pray today that, uh, God, that many, Lord, tonight, God, would rejoice in what the Lord God of heaven is able to do. Able, Lord, to work miracles. Able, God, to save. Able, God, to do the impossible for people. God, we thank you, God, for that. And we ask you, Lord, to look down at your great love and your mercy. And, God, tonight, Lord, for our people, tonight, Lord, that's lost and undone without God. Lord, the devil's a liar. Lord, he likes to try to steal everything that he can away from the people of God. But, dear Lord, we know today that, uh, God, that you got the power, God, to work miracles, Lord. you got the power, uh, God, to change men's lives. you got the power, God, to do the impossible. Lord, God, we thank you today, God. We bless the name of the Most High God. And, Lord, we pray today in the name of Jesus, uh, God, that you would move, Lord, in behalf of this service tonight. God, not only in our church service, Lord, but everywhere. Uh, Lord, where the doors of sin opened up, God, and men and women meet together. In the name of God, shut up, God, to worship the Lord God of heaven. God, the creator of all ends of the earth, Lord, who is like unto our God. He that holdeth, God, the heavens in his hand and measures, God, the sea. God, there's none like you, Lord. And I pray, God, in the name of Jesus tonight, God, that you move, Lord, that you bless. And God, may the sweet spirit of God just look over the men. God, tonight, Lord, we come together tonight, not in vain. But, God, we come to worship the Lord and, God, to hear from heaven. 
Lord, that word is so solid, God. Lord, that word means everything. And I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, God, bless your name, Lord. We love you now. God bless Caleb as he opens up in the sing and the testify. It's just not another service, Lord. It's a, it's Lord, one that will go down in history. God, we want to do our best for you, Lord. We want to give our best unto you tonight, God. Lord, we thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody else wanted this, but don't stand up. Praise the Lord. in the body, God, that you'll touch them, Lord. God, that the healing hand of Jesus, Lord, would minister, Lord, under their needs tonight, God. We look unto you, Lord, from all ends of the earth, God, that know, God, that you're the healer, you're the one that's able, God, to do all things. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Anybody have a song or testimony? Praise the Lord. I don't think he heard me. <laughs> Anybody have a testimony on their heart? Praise the Lord.
prepared for me. I think the Lord just saved me for as many blessings. <coughs> When morning comes and burdens seem hard to bear, and then I wonder, does anyone really care? And when it seems life is hopeless and everything's gone wrong, I look around and count my blessings. And the morning doesn't seem so long when I start my day with you, Lord, there's nothing I can't do, although sometimes the tempter tries to bring me down, when I go to you in prayer. I can make it through the day when I take the time to pray and I start my day with you. <clears throat> Sometimes we get so busy that we forget you. <clears throat> and then we wonder why our prayers don't seem Jason, starting our day with him. You, you'll have no better day than starting a day with him. You know, it, putting him first in our life, that's what it takes. You know, he's always waiting to meet us there, you know, and, 
And sometimes we fail to get to him, Brother Walter, but he's always there waiting on us. And, you know, I just praise him, and I thank him for everything. He's, he's been so good to me. I thank him. I thank him for my family. It's in church. You know, I, I was just sitting back there this morning, and I and I just sat and listened at Caleb play the drums and listened at him, and I thought, thought about Trevor singing and, and little Jackie and him in church and Shannon and him and, yeah. and Sandy and all of them. I thought, you know, I just... I thought, you know, what a blessing that is, you know, just just sitting and listening, you know, and, and I just listening to him with them drums and thinking about when he was young, how he played the drums when he was just a young boy. And I thank God, you know, that, that they serve him. You know, that's the main thing. I praise God for that. You know, that that is such a, a great thing to be able to say, you know. Uh, you know, I could say that, you know, that little Jackie and his family's got, uh, you know, big fine home, got this and that, and got this and that, and not have the Lord. But, you know, none of that right there wouldn't please, that don't please me like knowing that they're saved. You know, that's peace. That's because there's so many parents out there that's got kids that's on drugs and, and their family's just going here and yonder and just not serving the Lord. And, you know, that's a terrible thing on parents to have kids like that. I mean, it, it's hard on them. You know, it, 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 it's a hard thing to carry. It would have to be, you know, because we've dealt with that before, too, with family members. But, but I, I just praise God. He's been so good to me. I couldn't stand here and tell you all the things that God has done yeah, for me down yeah. through the years. You know, I got saved when I was about 16. You know, I, well, I got saved. Let me refer. I got saved when I was about 14, but I backslid. But I renewed back again when I was about 16. But I thank God. I, know, I think I've told it here before, but it was Leonard Ray Pass service down at Hone Acre High School. And I didn't understand and know about being saved. I mean, I'd heard mommy and daddy, they didn't go to church at the time. They both was raised, you know, would went to church with his kids. And my mommy, she was saved and had the Holy Ghost when she was eight years old. And then she got saved again right before, not a few years or so before she passed away. But but uh, I remember, you know, I didn't understand about being saved. But, but they had that service that night. I went with my aunt to church that night. And, you know, I was sitting there, and they give the altar call. And I didn't understand, Brother Jason, about yeah. getting saved. I'd never been saved. I didn't understand what, about it. But, you know, God will, he'll let you know. He'll deal with you. He'll let oh, you yeah. know. Yeah. You'll do with your heart. But but that night, uh, I, I released. I felt that I needed to go up there. Oh, I didn't understand. Yeah. But I felt in my heart that I needed to get yeah. him. I wanted him. I wanted to have him. Yeah. But that night, I, I released to go up, and it was just like somebody picked me up and carried me up in front of that altar. And that was the greatest feeling that I ever had, that 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 lightness, that peace that I felt that after I surrendered, after I gave my heart to him. But I remember, you know, when I was a girl, we went to, you know, with some of the neighbors when we lived up East Virginia. And I was about 10 years old. We went with some of our neighbors to a church. And uh, they got us to come up, you know, and get down and pray. We was just kids. And and I remember them, we'd get down, and I, I didn't, you know, I, like I said, Mommy and them would, talk, you know, say things about the Lord. They they respected the Lord, and she wanted, you know, she wanted to, you know, do things. She wanted, to, they both was good about respecting the Lord, but but uh, but they didn't live for him, you know, at the time. But, but I remember our neighbors took us, and I got down to pray, and, and one of the ladies, I don't know who it was, but one of the ladies, a teacher, I guess, but she was quoting the 23rd Psalm, you know, this is the Lord, this is the Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want. Right. And I thought, I don't want to say that. Amen. I don't want to say that I don't want him. I didn't understand as a kid. I thought, you know, but God was dealing with me then, and I didn't know it. But, but I thought, if I say that, I'm saying I don't want the Lord, you know, but... But I did want him, even at 10 years old, you know. He deals with us. You know, he wants us to serve us while, serve him while we're young. You know, while we can give him our best years of our life, you know. Because when you get older, it's harder. You lose your memory and stuff, like remembering stuff. And, and you know, you don't, you can't go as good as you did when you were younger, you know. But, but I love the Lord. He's been so good to me. Amen.
work the last Tuesday night at uh, Tim Lester's. The kids started being real rowdy, and I went back there to help Kendra with the kids. And there was this old woman that I'd, I'd been to church with several, several times. And uh, it was almost like something spoke to me and said, walk to her. And they had asked her to be able to come up and sing. And I noticed that when she, when she came up to sing, she didn't bring no songbook. She, she got her Bible, and she opened up her Bible, and she pulled out a song out of her Bible. And then she went up to, went up to Bill Clinton. I thought about that, and I thought about that, and the longer I thought about it, the worse I felt about it. And I said, I said, Lord, I said, what, what are you trying to tell me here? And he said, he said, she didn't have that, but she had that song when she was at church, but she had to get it out of her songbook when she was at the house. So she brought something to be able to do for the Lord before she got to church, so she was prepared. Mm-hmm. And I, I said, Lord, I said, I said, I've been. I've been obsessing about the old path here for the last, I don't know, a month and a half. <laughs> I, I want to be like them, them old people. I want to, yeah. I want I want what they had, what they got. Yeah. But pray for me. I'm, I'm not singing.
two ways that I ate supper at my house. Sometimes I eat on my recliner. My wife brings it to me and just hands it right in my lap and I eat it. It's real tart. Then there's times she's got it all on the table. She says, get up. Come get it. Boy, we've been eating real good on the recliner. Here at Antioch, We've been eating real good. The Lord's been a blessing us. Now it's on the table. Get up. Praise the Lord. I am 
Good, good singing tonight. If you have your Bibles, uh, turn with us to Second Kings. Second Kings tonight. Praise the Lord. We appreciate everybody being here tonight. Boy, this sounds good. Amen. I appreciate uh, the service we had this morning. I'd like to hear Tina testify tonight. Amen. So glad she was able to come. Her mama hadn't been doing well. She's glad that she's here tonight. Say something for the Lord, sis. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Now we got to get old Tim back in here. Ain't that right? Got to get him back in here. Praise the Lord. Get a, get. We got to go to heaven. We can't go to hell. Boy, that's the only option there's, that there is. They, they ain't but two places to go, and, and uh, they ain't but one, amen, they ain't but one way into heaven, and that's through the church and the Lord Jesus. And uh, the only, all you got to do to go to hell is just don't do nothing. That's all you got to do, just don't do nothing. But I tell you, I want to make it. So I appreciate uh, the Lord tonight. All, all of our preachers is gone. Look, Brandon, he's gone. To, and I was looking for Jacob, and he's gone with him. Amen. So uh, so we just do the best we can tonight. Second Kings chapter 13, and uh, we'll start reading at verse number 14. Uh, you ask the Lord to anoint us and to help us tonight. Sometimes it's just, it comes so easy, the Spirit of the Lord does. That's what I was talking about, it's just so easy. Then there's other times you've got to push for it. But there ain't never been a time that I go to church that I don't desire it. Amen. I love that feeling when you walk out the back door saying, my goodness, what a meeting. Y'all like that? Amen. Amen. I, I mean, God can help us tonight. God can uh, do great things for us tonight if we will allow him. Amen. If we will allow him. So you pray the Lord would anoint us just a few minutes. In uh, 2 Kings 13 and verse 14, the Bible said, Now Elisha was fallen sick of his sickness. Whereof he died, and Joash, the king of Israel, came down unto him and wept over his face and said, O oh, my father, O oh, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And Elisha said unto him, Take bow and arrows. And he took unto him a bow and arrows. And he said to the king of Israel, Put thine hand upon the bow. And he put his hand upon it. And Elisha put his hands upon the king's hands. Think about this picture. And he said, open the window eastward. And he opened it. And then Elisha said, shoot. And he shot. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance from Syria. For thou shalt smite the Syrians in Aphek till thou have consumed them. And he said, take the arrows. And he took them. And he said unto the king of Israel, Smite upon the ground. And he smote thrice and stayed. And the man of God was wroth with him and said, Thou shouldest have smitten five or six times. Thou hadst thou smitten Syria till thou had consumed it. Whereof now thou shalt smite Syria but thrice. That's all that we'll read tonight. Amen. And uh, I want to preach a little bit about having the opportunity, amen, having the opportunity, but just letting it get by you, just letting it get by you. Now, uh, here tonight in the Word of God, a very familiar uh, scripture this morning, I was talking a little bit about Elijah. Sometimes I say them names, Elijah and Elisha, but it don't matter. Either name will be fine for any, any miracle because the same spirit that was in Elijah, amen, was upon Elisha. So it don't matter, amen, which miracle you're talking about. It don't matter which one that you, uh, that you name. We know that the same spirit because uh, the Bible said that Elisha uh, desired a double portion, amen, of uh, what Elijah had. Well, uh, there was a day when the kings of the earth and his is uh, the book of Kings and I've been a studying a little bit about it and reading about it and any time that, uh, that there was trouble or the enemy uh, would come into the camp of the people of God uh, the first thing that they was to do 
I was to call for the man of God, the prophet of God, amen, and have them to pray and, and have them to give counsel, amen, to what the king was supposed to do. And we look now at our, our leaders of our country, and it still goes on, and how they've got uh, different preachers, well-known preachers, and uh, men like Billy Graham and others uh, that have stood and counseled our uh, brother, the president of the United States. Well, it wasn't no different in that day. Uh, uh, brother, they so counseled counsel uh, from the men of God uh, and the Bible said through it all that Elijah, uh, amen was a great counselor a uh, brother under the kings, it was him that counseled uh, uh, but yet it was him that rebuked as well uh, uh, for it was Elijah that rebuked uh, amen Ahab to his face uh, and told him that he was the one uh, that troubleth Israel uh, uh, but now King Joash, a uh, uh, brother Elisha has come down uh, to the time to die and children of God, let me tell you something. Some of these old timers, it's a dying. The sad thing is that the generation that's replacing them, brother, it's a different spirit. Brother, and what it was years ago. Amen. What is it, preacher? Brother, when the old man of God's about to die. Brother, the King Joash, the king of Israel. Brother, went down to where he lay at. He was troubled in his mind. And notice what he said. He said, Alas, of the chariot of Israel, of the man of God that we've all looked unto. God help us when the men of God die. Y'all want to tell you something. There's something that troubles me. Brother, all through the land, amen, as we see churches, and I've seen preachers, I've seen different congregations. One of the men that my wife loves listening to, amen, up in New York, but she said now that he's dead. He said she said it's different now. Oh, there's a sadness that grips my soul when we think about what we, as the body of Christ here, has stood for down through the years, and we wonder about what them that'll come after us, what they will allow, and what they do not allow. I want to tell you tonight, Amen. If we die, and the elders of the church die. Uh, young men and women stand uh, for what you've been stood uh, and what you've been taught to stand for. Uh, holiness is still right. Uh, living for Jesus uh, is still the best way of living. Uh, amen in this world. Uh, and we don't have to be uh, a church where they wrote a kebab uh, on the door. Uh, I pray that God uh, would raise up young men and women uh, that would stand for him. Uh, where the Bible said, uh, amen, that this battle had went on in Israel's days for years and years. A king after king had to fight Syria and now the prophet of God is getting ready to exit the scene and he knows there'll be nobody there a brother to comfort them and the Bible said of the king Joash I went down to where he was at and said oh God of the chariot of Israel what shall we do? And now the prophet knew uh, while he was there. Uh, Elisha knew uh, while the man of God was there. Uh, and the Bible said, uh, he said, take now uh, thy bow and thine arrows uh, and lift up thy window uh, and shoot it toward the east. Uh, so that's what he done. Uh, he got him a bow uh, and he put an arrow on it uh, and he shot it. Uh, and the Bible said uh, that he put his hands on the bow uh, and that man of God uh, put in his hands I laid up upon the king's hands and I'm going to tell you church if you'll let God I put his hands upon your hands he'll lead you he'll guide you he'll show you the way a brother that he'd have you to go too many of us are following our own demand our own devices and doing our own thing and figuring out that God knows our heart and justifying of things that we're doing. But all oh, tonight, of the Bible still right. He said to seek ye first of the kingdom of heaven and all of his righteousness. If you want to know the goal of the succeeding in this world as to put God number one in your life. And to put God before your family. I put God before your children. I put God before 
before your job. I put him before your money. I put him before everything. He said, if you do this, I will. I give you all the desires, a friend of your heart. And in the world to come, I brother life eternal. Oh, tonight, I would to God tonight of the God I would lay the old prophet's hand upon my hand as I shoot my arrow because Syria, amen, has given us trouble. Some of you tonight, you've got some Syrian battles that you've been fighting. You've got some things that you've been warned against. Oh, you get a little victory over it and then it comes right back again. You feel like you've knocked the job down but you never got his head chopped off. Well, I've come to tell you tonight there's a God in heaven that can and will give you complete deliverance. If you want it, you can have it. Oh, yes. He's a God tonight that's got power over the enemy, a power over what the devil is able to do to all of us. Amen. I've got a few Syrian battles that I'm fighting. Amen. Number one on my list is doubt. Amen. That's number one on my list. Trying to figure it out myself. Well, you can't do that. It's a walk of faith. Amen. This man, how this king Joash came down and he had his hand upon the bow. Now you lay your hand, Walter. He said, now take thy bow and raise thy window and shoot thine arrow out toward the east. And he done that. And he said, this is how the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. Amen over Syria. Well, church tonight, amen, we're not fighting them Syrians, brother in the flesh, but we're fighting them spiritually. Paul said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. There's darkness everywhere. There's hell moving everywhere. And we've got to fight the fight of faith. And I don't know about you, but there's some things that I really need deliverance on. There's some things tonight I really need for God to help me with and I don't doubt that some of you are just like me. You need God's help. Well the wind is open and the arrow's been shot and now the next set of directions is coming and here's what Elisha said. I take thine arrows in thy hand and he said smote the ground and he said every time that you smote it it'll be a complete victory. Our brother over the Syrian. Amen. Somebody said, Preacher, the king was so foolish. Elisha would have told you the king was foolish because he only smote it three times. And the Bible said the prophet was mad, aggravated at him. He said, You could have surely been delivered forever from the Syrian army. But only because uh, you smote the ground uh, three times, uh, three different battles, uh, you're going to win. Uh, but the next time they come, uh, oh God, uh, amen, it ain't going to be pretty. Uh, some folks, uh, they backslide every month, uh, they backslide every year, uh, they get troubled, uh, amen, they get drawn away uh, every little bit. Uh, I'm going to tell you, uh, it don't have to be this way. Uh, he's a God in heaven. Uh, hallelujah. He'll give you strength, a brother, to stand. The Bible said he's able to make the weak even to stand. Paul said, when I'm weak, then am I made strong. And my weakness is perfected in his strength. And church, let me tell you, he's a God in heaven that'll give you deliverance tonight. But so many of us are like Joash. We're playing around. We could have it, but we really don't want it. They ain't a habit in here you can't quit. Woo! I'm just preaching tonight. I know we're a little off, but the wind is open and the arrow's been shot. Now, how are you going to do? Amen. Put it up there again. Hallelujah. 
Amen. I'm not preaching about me. I'm preaching about the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I know Walter's just a hands man, man's hand like mine is. But old Elisha, that was him hands. Amen. That worked 20. A brother worked the Bible said. Amen. What was it? 27 miracles. They said that Elijah had done 14 miracles. But Elisha, I wanted a double portion. So the 27th miracle was the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. Well, that's not a double portion, is it? But when he died, the Bible said they buried him yonder in a cave. And one of the soldiers from the army had died. And they put him in. And when he touched the bone of Elijah, of Elisha, the Bible said that he revived. I'm going to tell you tonight, God's power is real. God's Holy Ghost is real. God can help you tonight. There's people in this church, how you prayed and you've asked God to deliver you and he has for a while. And sometimes it's a month. And sometimes it's six months. And sometimes it's a year. Wouldn't you like to get rid of that for good? Wouldn't you like, amen, to get shit of that out of your life and completely get delivered? Well, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance, it's in your hand. Oh, God, a preacher, amen. Why did the king behave that way? Elisha said to the king, if thou would have smited five or six times, he said thou would have no doubt wiped them Syrians out. But because only you didn't have no zeal, you didn't have no muck, no spark about you. Oh, you say, preacher, he was foolish. How foolish are you and me sitting in the house of God and the wind has been opened and the word of the Lord is being preached to bring us deliverance. Oh, the problem is we don't really confident and believe in God's word the way we need to. We don't believe the report as Isaiah said, but there is deliverance. There is victory. There is soundness of mind. You know, that's really all it is. I'm about done. It's just a soundness of mind. We just need God to change our minds. Change our minds, God. Get in my mind. Situate my brain around. Oh, God, because that's where most of your battle's at. Am I not right? That's where most of our battle's at. Amen. I'm sitting there tonight. Have the devil battling me. Amen. Every which way. And I don't want to brag on him, but it's just a fact. Amen. I thought, Lord, when you give me a blessing, I'm going to have to fight to keep that blessing. Amen. You're going to have to fight to keep the things that the Lord has given to you. The devil will try to steal it away. The devil will try to take it. Oh, tonight, but I come boldly to tell you. Hallelujah. On this night, we seem like, amen, we've not been shouting like normal. Well, we haven't, amen, been doing a lot of things. God's laid his hand upon your hand, and the arrow's been shot. I don't care if it's lust. I don't care if it's jealousy. I don't care if it's pride. Oh, tonight, it may be many things that we don't got a clue about, but there's a God in heaven. I said, take the arrow of the Lord's deliverance and smite the ground. I smite it. I wondered in my spirit. And I said, God, why? Why did you tell him to smite the ground? And then the writer of the spirit spoke to me and said, Jason, from out of the ground, I made him man. And you've got to put Adam down under your feet. And you've got to put Adam down tonight and then you'll have deliverance well the Syrians came back and battled Israel and Israel got the back victory the first time they came back the second time and Israel got the victory the second time the devil don't want you to have no victory he don't want you to, it's okay to come in and get our emotions worked up. Amen, get a few songs going, and get to clapping and all like that. But when we go home, how we live. I appreciate what Nicky said this morning. Where's he at? I appreciate what you said. You said just what all of us wanted to say. Amen. 
Amen. He just said what all of us wanted to say. Uh, because how we live on the outside of this building is determined who our God is. Amen. How we conduct our life and how we behave ourselves. Hey, we may have long dresses. We may not take our shirt off like Brother Walter said. Amen. We may have all of the outward doing right. Amen. But if the inward ain't right, God knows all about it. Oh, I want my inward to be right. I do. I want my heart to be. Oh, I'd read them book of Kings in the past three or four weeks. I kept reading it. And here's what they'd say. It said, and this one became king at such and such age. I bet his heart was not right with the Lord. God's are looking at your heart tonight. Some of you need deliverance. Oh, preacher, what will they think about me? You better quit worrying about what they think about you. When the arrow of the Lord's deliverance is here, you better take advantage of what the word says. Then the fourth trip came. The fourth trip came. Syria came back again. See, when you get victory over something and you have a good revival and you pray a little bit and you get strength and you get victory over it and you get it out of your mind, but it's something how that them old nature and them old habits and them old things will start wiggling. When you're in revival and the spirit of the Lord's on you, in your mind you're thinking, man, I'll never have this with me again. Am I preaching to anybody in here besides Jason? At least smile at me. You don't have to say amen, just smile. Amen. Hey, I know what I'm talking about. Hey, man, when you get high in the spirit, Lord, I'll never do that again. I'm going to read 20 chapters a day. I'm going to pray three hours a day. Go to revival. Go to, I mean, man, you on, on Mount Zion. you making vows to God. And the whole time, God's are watching you. And the whole time, God's are shaking his head and saying, son, if you don't get complete deliverance, but when you get really delivered from something, Oh, you, I, I must be a really preacher. When you really get delivered from something. You see, like the young man that stood up the other night and said that he had some trouble with his cousin. Saying words, you remember that? Some of y'all wasn't here. Some of you remember that he said that? Well, when the Lord saved me, I completely was delivered of that. I never had to fight that. But there's other things I had to fight. Amen. Amen. I mean, I didn't ever, I, I remember telling the UPS, one of them supervisors told me, he said, this place will make you cuss, preacher. I said, no, it won't. No, it won't. The Lord delivered me. And far as I know, as far as I know that there's never been a word since the day that I got saved come out of my mouth at that place. I've never said, they've never heard me say a word. Now, I'm not, I got delivered. I got delivered. Hey Amen. When you get delivered from something, you don't even think about it. When you get delivered from something, I mean, the Lord delivers you. That's what the prophet of God was wanting to do with Israel and this king, but he didn't take advantage of it. Now, I'm going to ask you tonight, just, just survey your land. Put down your ground plots. Put down your markers. Is there some things tonight that you need delivered from? Delivered. Delivered. I've had to fight this. I'll get in revival and it just goes good. I get strength. I get power from heaven. And then just in a few days, that old flesh. Now listen, these things that are sent by God to keep us humble, they're called thorns. But there's some things that God don't tempt man with sin. And there's things in your life that you just can't seem to overcome. You just can't seem to overcome it. I'm going to tell you tonight, not because I'm here, not because anybody else, but on this service tonight, the word of the Lord was read, the word of the Lord was preached, and there's deliverance here tonight if you want it. It's just up to you, King Joe Ash, how many times you smite the ground. And we're not going to have no song tonight, sir. Just don't feel led to have no singing. Don't feel led to do nothing. Don't come to entertain me. Don't come just to please me. But if there's some things tonight that you need complete deliverance on, complete. bring that Bible with you. If you got one, bring that Bible with you. That's representing that prophet holding his hand upon your hand. You want help to quit? You won't help the stop. There's deliverance here. There's deliverance here tonight. Amen. I need to pray myself, but I'm going to get my altar call. I'm going to get, because I want deliverance. 
I don't want nothing to bother me. Things that God intended to help me from and deliver me from. I won't deliver from them tonight. And I'm going to be believe in the word of God and trust in what this Bible says. Anybody else tonight? Anybody else tonight need to pray? Anybody else tonight need to come and consult with God? He's here tonight for your help. He's here tonight for your strength tonight. Praise God. Tell God in the name.